This is a commercial doorbell. This is a waterproof enclosure. This is a DigiSpark knockoff. These two are proximity sensors. This is a box from PCBWay. What do all these things have in common? Let's find out. Cheesy intro aside, I am finally uh, getting done my commission project. I've been commissioned to build something um, over a year ago now. Very sorry about that. Um, and here are all the pieces combined. Um, this has taken up a lot of my uh, mental real estate. I will be extremely glad to be done with it. And uh, the person who commissioned me this stuff will be extremely glad to have it in his or her hands. So what's the goal here? Well, the goal is to use um, one or more. Actually, the goal is to have both these sensors trigger when someone approaches the door and that someone could be a mailman and it could be a dog. It can be anything that's alive because the PIR needs something that is alive and anything that has a reasonable size because the microwave sensor will need that as well. And it is going to fake the signal from one of these buttons to ring this doorbell. Now, what's great about this kit is we got two buttons, front door and back door, and we've got three receiving alarms. So basically, you plug one in, you know, in your living room, one in upstairs, and one in your workshop or something like that. So yeah, this is the goal is to get this all put together and working. So what's the rest of the stuff? Let me show you. So here I have the DigiSpark and I've got the two sensors here. And some of you are gonna be yelling at your screen saying, hey, you should have just used a triple five timer to do this. Look, I know, I ordered some parts to do this with the lower power, but uh, after speaking with my um, commissioner, I guess, um, that person said it didn't really matter if it was battery powered uh, and they'd rather have it sooner rather than later and obviously I've made that person wait so long already. So here we go. We're using a microcontroller. I know. Uh, but it's fine because uh, this thing just sips power and um, the person will have a plug uh, nearby that they'll be able to run a power pack to. So there's zero problems with that. All right. So now these two are connected and they are on pin zero and pin one, their output that is. And this microcontroller is just looking if the output of pin zero and pin one is high, then it's gonna pulse a high train on this LED here. And uh, so which is pin two, uh, and then that LED will turn on and then off. And then there's a cool down period of uh, three seconds. So it doesn't get triggered all the time. Uh, we can adjust all these parameters, which is what's great with the microcontroller. Also, it's less effort, so there. And now, just do the test. Well, these things are quite sensitive because I have a wall not too far over this way. But basically, when you trigger them, and there's a three second cooldown, it'll turn on for about 800 milliseconds and then turn off. So yeah, that's the simple logic. And then that will be mounted into this box and then we have to do a little bit of work to the uh, buttons to make them work. Other than that, that's it. But wait, what does PCBWay have to do with this? Well, uh, they are sponsoring this build as well. And I have made up these boards. So these boards, I already stole the pen out of this one. I love those PCBWay pens. Uh, these boards will let me combine my inputs and outputs into a nice PCB so I could just slip it into here and the thing won't look like a friggin wiring uh, like like as if it was a bomb or something for the uh, for the mailman to get scared of so I just made these boards they're in white they should blend in really well uh, I'm probably just going to glue them there we go a simple electronics doorbell ringer so I'll probably just glue them in place into here um, they should fit just fine. Um, now this thing has post holes, but um, I wanted to order once and not like a bunch of times. So I just made the board to fit 
and all I have to do is then glue it in. So the DigiSpark is going to come up here. We've got my uh, signals for the PIR and the the uh, millimeter wave thing, this, this thing here, the RCWL0516 uh, proximity sensor. And basically, I've got uh, their pins here, I've got the 5 volts, I've got ground, everything's output here, I've put pads everywhere, and uh, thankfully I put pads because I actually forgot to um, put an output pin down here. I also have the uh, 6 to 16 volt in over here to go to the V in of the DigiSpark, which is not here right now. Uh, and I've got these two holes where you can put a zip tie to hold your wire in place. So that fits really well. All I have to do is put some sort of good glue in here. I was going to use hot glue, but then I realized it might be warm in here. So yeah, no hot glue. But uh, yeah, I'll figure something out. Put this in and then we should just do some wiring and we should be good to go. And so disaster struck. Um, I was trying to do a little bit of uh, presto changeo since I have to make two of these boards um, I figured I would make uh, one off screen and so this here is pretty much what the final product was supposed to look like. Um, I would make one off, off screen, make one on screen for you guys. Um, this one here completely finished was working a hundred percent was working for hours and then I shut everything down came back the next day and it stopped working so uh, I don't know if uh, the Arduino here got some feedback through the um, through this red wire here that's the signal that goes and presses the button uh, I'll explain to you how it's supposed to work uh, very shortly but it fried. The This Arduino is completely done for and fried. So that is not good. So yeah, I think the problem is I should have protected the Arduino uh, output um, ideally with a transistor and a resistor and a diode to try to make sure it's not the Arduino um, that's supplying the current. Uh, and that nothing can come back the other way, but in my haste, I didn't do that. You know, uh, I am a hobbyist and not a professional. So let me show you the gist of this project, uh, but this project will become version one, and I'm going to have to work on a version two. Um, I'm pretty happy with what the boards look like. Uh, I am going to have some holes drilled on the next version. I'm going to have some spots for uh, transistors and I'm going to have some spots for uh, resistors and diodes, especially surface mount because it looks really clean in there. Also I have to fix the footprint for this DigiSpark because it is the wrong footprint. I had to do some, uh, you know, here you see some jumper wires but this one here made it a lot cleaner with uh, solid core wire. So yeah, let me just show you how I was triggering this thing. And, uh, and then we're going to have to wrap this up and wait for version 2. So the little chip inside here, which we will tear down in a second and I will show you, is the EV1527 OTP encoder. I think OTP in this context means one-time programmable. As you can tell, this data sheet looks very homemade, and that's because the data sheet is actually in Chinese. And it looks like somebody just sort of built this. Uh, so... Uh, it's about a 12 volt uh, chip, which is great because these things use a 12 volt battery. Four data pins. Um, basically, on this side you got uh, VCC. Uh, you've got ground, which I think is VSS. I'm not 100% sure on the nomenclature there, but I think that's what it is. The transmit, uh, an oscillator, and then you've got four inputs on the side. Now, these things here, they seem to be all wired to do the same thing. So I think we got lucky with that. So going on now, this is uh, different combinations that you could have to get different things happening. Uh, but I think this thing uh, is just programmed to grab any uh, uh, pull, I think it's pull down. Uh, yeah, I think it's any ground. It's been a little bit since I've uh, played with this. It's been over a week now. Um, just program to grab any one of those uh, inputs uh, low to just send out 
you know, trigger a signal to, uh, to ring the doorbell. Um, and then if we go over here, we've got the diagram. And so as you can see, we've got our four push buttons here. Uh, this one only has one populated. Uh, however, there's two resistors. See those 4.7 Ks? There's two of these, but only one button. It's a little bit more complicated in there than you think, so that's why I got a little lost in the weeds. Uh, so I think I connected out to a K1 here uh, with this uh, with, with these wires here uh, on the back, and then uh, K1 would pull down uh, when both these things triggered. Or I think I may have even just gone directly onto um, K3. I'll, I'll have to check when I open this one up again. But yeah, basically it seems like if only, you know, K3 pin 8 is being used, then you could just tie on to this side of the 4.7K uh, resistor, which is not what I did, which is maybe why I have a problem here. Uh, and it would just act as if you would push the switch because the switch would just connect the ground side to there. Uh, this one, these things actually use a transistor for that. It's very complex, but uh, that's the gist of it. If you know that the button gives a ground to a pin, then your Arduino just needs to give a ground to the pin as well. And it's just as if um, th this button has been pressed, which is what I wanted. So that means someone can walk up to the house, press the button, or they'll be uh, sensed by these two sensors and the button will be pressed anyways. So let's open this thing up and I'll show you what I mean. So here is the doorbell. There is a little uh, opening here, which you just put a little uh, screwdriver or a pin or something. I used a small uh, Allen push in there and you just open it up like so. There are a couple screws here, one and two, and you're all the way open. So here's a little chip and I'm having a hard time seeing because I'm a little bit further from from the device than you are. Uh, but this is the chip, I believe this side here is pin one, right down in this corner. That would be pin one. And then these are the inputs, one, two, three, and four. As you can see, there's a resistor on these two. I can't see the value, need to zoom in a little bit. Uh, but this is where I would solder uh, the wire. In fact, you know what, let me get you a little closer. I think that's as close as I can reasonably get. So yeah, here we go, the pin one over on this end over here, and then pin eight here. So these are all the inputs. And as you can see, these two, uh, they're actually 4.7K, that's four, seven, and uh, four, seven, two, so that's four, seven, and two zeros. That means 4,700 ohms, just like the data sheet showed. And here is the little transistor. Uh, which is triggered up here by the button. This is one of the pins of the button. So the other side of the pin must be ground and yeah, it comes over here through here. Uh, so that must be the um, uh, base and then you have, you know, the collector and emitter. So yeah, basically it pulls this pin down, one of these two pins or both of them. It kind of seems like it's in parallel. It's very hard to tell. Um, but pulls to ground. So basically all you need to do is attach your Arduino pin here. I think my mistake is I attached it over here on the chip. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I didn't use the best practices so um, I do want to redo that board. So I'm going to do some more experimenting and uh, I should have a version 2 ready soon enough. And since I have the close-up ready, uh, there is the PIR sensor I ended up going with. Uh, it's an SR602 uh, module, and it's all hot glued in all around the edge. So it's basically stuck in there and sealed. And then the microwave sensor uh, actually can go through plastic. The PIR has trouble, but the microwave sensor can. So I've got double-sided tape here and the microwave sensor is placed right there on the inside and then there's our button there so yeah a few things I want to improve like the connection points for these uh, for these wires which for the, the time being are just coming from behind the micro and uh, here they're coming through I just drilled a hole through both the casing and the lid of this thing and put hot glue in there so nothing should come out but I can even put more hot glue in there so it should be waterproof and all good to go
And of, of course, I've got my, um, my servo leads here, uh, right here. And these are not detachable on this prototype, but on the other board, they are. And so that's where it ends for now. Um, I need to revise these boards, uh, make a little bit more uh, protection for the DigiSparks. I need to adjust the footprint for the DigiSparks. So look forward to a board coming in the near future. Um, but that's the beauty of using PCB Way or PCB service like it. Uh, these boards cost me $5 plus shipping. If you're not in a hurry, the shipping is really reasonable. Um, especially considering a lot of places like AliExpress and eBay have become unreasonable for shipping. PCB Way kept their prices pretty low, probably because they have partnerships or um, couriers they use all the time. But other than that, I want you to leave comments in the description on how I should improve this, uh, what improvements I should add to it, um, and if you get your comment in before I order the new boards, maybe your revisions will be included. Either way, I will put the uh, files in a GitHub linked below. Thanks for watching.